All right, everybody. So good afternoon and welcome to our second class of our MCAT Organic Chemistry Strategy course. Uh, my name is Matt, your teacher. You met me last time, right? Uh, and so, so in our first class, we talked more generally about how to approach certain organic chemistry um, passages using some things that you've heard about before, right? Our passage type, our question types, uh, as well as our, some of our answering strategies. Uh, and so basically the way the next two classes are formatted is that today's class will be talking mainly about how to approach passages specifically uh, and talking about both text heavy and figure heavy passages um, and how they relate to, to organic chemistry. Those are the two main types that we're going to be looking at. Uh, and then in our next class we'll be talking much more specifically about questions uh, and sort of how to approach questions as effectively and as efficiently as you possibly can. Okay, so, so that being said, uh, let's go back to our text heavy versus our figure heavy passages. Uh, and so, so like I mentioned, these are sort of the two general types of organic chemistry passages that you'll see. Um, and obviously the names kind of speak for themselves, right? Text heavy are going to be very dense and very sort of wordy. Uh, and figure heavy are going to be very heavy structure and sort of picture heavy, right? Uh, and so, so let's take this out one step at a time and let's far, f start by focusing on text heavy passages. So, uh, as you've heard sort of before uh, in some of your classes, what is one tool that you can think of um, that's going to be help us get through a, a passage um, in general, not only a text heavy passage, but just passages overall? Yeah. So, so highlighting, right? So highlighting is sort of that one tool, or one of the tools that you have in your toolbox available to you. Right, so highlighting. Okay, uh, and so in some of your previous classes, you've talked about highlighting and sort of what are some of the important things to look at for highlighting. Uh, and so, so let's sort of recap those here. Um, and so, the important things to highlight. All right, so, so what are some of the important things that you guys remember highlighting? Uh, or saying that you should be highlighting uh, in some of your previous classes. Yeah. Yeah, the main idea of each paragraph, right? Our main themes. Right, so that says main themes. Uh, as this marker is dying, I'll switch it out to something else. Uh, so, so that's one. Is there anything else that we can think of? Yeah, so, so definitions is definitely another key one. All right, what else do we have? Maybe italics? Yeah, absolutely. Sort of anything that's italicized. What about the other two? Well, there's two more. I sort of gave that part away, right? Uh, but so, so, uh, so the other two, though, are less, a little bit less obvious, right? Okay, so, so one of them uh, is relationships. So if we talk about a trend uh, or a relationship between two different concepts, uh, sorry for dropping the marker, um, we should be highlighting that and trying to elucidate that from our passage. Uh, and what's one other thing that we can think of? So, so this one is actually very related to, to one of the ones that we already have on the board. So, so as we're going through the passage, if we're highlighting our main themes and we're getting a good idea of what the passage is telling us early on uh, in each of our paragraphs and sort of in the passage itself, uh, we also want to make note of any times that they show a reversal to that main theme, right? So any times that they basically go against something that they said before. Right, so a good example of this is like uh, if we have, say, a passage that's on SN2 reactions. Uh, and let's say, for instance, that they specify a particular solvent uh, early on in the passage, or early on in the paragraph, for instance, even. But then later on in the paragraph or the passage, uh, they talk about changing that solvent or changing that condition in some way, that would be a pretty key, rever key reversal to that main theme, right? Uh, because these reversals and sort of these going against what has been said before uh, are things that sort of turn into good MCAT questions. Okay, so, so once we have a good idea of what we should be highlighting, let's actually take a look at the example paragraph that we have, or the example passage that we have, uh, and let's do some highlighting. Uh, so if we turn to page 116 and take a look at our passage uh, mapping example, Let's sort of read through the passage together and come up with good things to highlight, right? So take a look at the first paragraph there. 
the first sentence says, natural fats co are complex mixtures of triesters and glycerol. Uh, so that very first sentence uh, seems like a really good example of what kind of thing that we should be highlighting. Yeah, yeah, a definition, right? A definition is absolutely present here. All right, so let's go paragraph one. I would highlight just natural fats. All right, keep going. The next thing that we, uh, that we have here is they undergo the typical reactions of esters. Uh, so they undergo the typical reactions of esters, uh, and, and that could be something related to a main theme here, but maybe let's keep reading, right? The following experiments were performed to study the reaction mechanisms of ester hydrolysis. Uh, and so even though midway through that paragraph, we sort of had something that looked like a main theme, uh, it sort of smelled like a main theme, it sort of acted like a main theme, right? We sort of had something sort of come up at the end of the paragraph that kind of took precedence there. Even though they're saying that natural fats react the same way as most esters, this passage in particular is talking about these specific class of reactions, and that's what we need to be highlighting. So reaction mechanisms. Of ester hydrolysis. All right, so far so good? All right. All right, so let's keep going and let's take a look at our second paragraph there. And our second paragraph has a heading, it's experiment one. Is there anything particularly special about experiment one uh, that we may be thinking about? Yeah, so, so it's actually italicized, right? Uh, and because it's italicized, we should be doing what? We should be highlighting. So let's go ahead and highlight experiment one. That way at least we have that heading to come back to in case we need it. Uh, and let's read experiment one. So methyl propanoate was reacted with heavy hydroxide uh, in the form of Na plus and O18H minus. Uh, the reaction was allowed to go to completion and then treated with enough N one molar H2SO4 so that the solution turned blue litmus paper pink. The reaction products were then extracted and purified. Spectral analysis provided the following information about the resulting products, and then they give you some numbers at the end there. So looking at sort of this experiment, uh, the main idea here basically was presented to us in that very first sentence. Right? They talked about what reactant they used and what they used to, to make that transformation. Uh, so here I would highlight methyl propanoate was reacted with heavy hydroxide. All right. Uh, and then further along in the paragraph, uh, there's not a whole lot other things that we should be highlighting. We've already captured our main theme. Uh, there are no reversals presented to us of the main theme. Uh, and there's not necessarily any relationships here either. Right? So, so the, that would be pretty much it that I would be highlighting in that very second paragraph. So let's move on. Uh, and in paragraph three, once again, we have a heading there that's in experiment two. Uh, what's particular about experiment two again? It's italicized, just like before. All right, so let's highlight experiment two. Perfect. Let's read through experiment two. So acid-catalyzed hydrolysis of an ester is also possible. Two different esters were labeled with O18 at the ester oxygen, not the carbonyl oxygen, in order to test the mechanism of hydrolysis. The experiments gave the following results. Uh, so once again, we have a main idea being presented to us in that very first sentence, right? Talking about acid-catalyzed hydrolysis. of esters is also possible. Okay, so, so in addition to being a main theme of this paragraph, and that's sort of the important reason why we should be highlighting it, another key thing that we should be noticing here, right, is that we're talking now about acid-catalyzed hydrolysis. In paragraph two, they didn't necessarily say anything about what was catalyzing it, but what do we know about hydroxide? Yeah, OH minus is a pretty good base, right? Uh, and so not only is this a pretty good example of a main theme and a main idea to be highlighted, uh, it's also a pretty good example of a relationship to be identif identified and highlighted as well, right? So this idea of acid-catalyzed hydrolysis um, sort of re being related to this base-catalyzed uh, hydrolysis going on in paragraph two. All right, so let's keep going along and let's take a look at those results that they mentioned before. 
Uh, so in those two Roman numerals there, Roman numeral one, we have n-butyl acetate and acid produced, uh, n-butyl acetate in acid produced normal acetic acid and heavy butanol. Uh, and then the second thing that we have there is terp-butyl acetate in acid resulted in heavy acetic acid and normal terp-butanol, terp-butyl alcohol, excuse me. Uh, and so with these particular things, um, we definitely need to highlight the main idea of each of these, and I would definitely treat them as a separate paragraph. Uh, especially because now we're talking about results, right? And so it's definitely could be uh, important to some of these questions that we see in a little bit uh, of any kind of results that we, that we have available to us. Uh, and so let's go through what we should be highlighting here. Uh, and so once again, in that first bullet point, we have N-butyl acetate. Uh, and so I would definitely begin with that. Right, so they say that we have this N-butyl acetate. Sorry about the computer, let me just rotate it. Uh, N-butyl acetate, uh, and specifically, let's also point out what's being created when this N-butyl acetate is reactive, right? And so what ends up coming out of this N-butyl acetate mixture uh, is a normal acetic acid and heavy butanol. All right, then in the second bullet point, the second Roman numeral that we have available there, uh, it says tert butyl acetate. Right, and it produces heavy acetic acid and normal tert butyl alcohol. All right, okay, so, so far so good, and we have one last paragraph to take a look at. In that very last paragraph, we have the products from both reactions one and two. We're then treated with NaOH until the solution turned lit pink litmus paper and blue. Uh, they were then extracted and purified. Analysis of the final products of these reactions showed that significant amounts of the starting materials, n acetate and terp-butyl acetate, were present. Uh, and so, so there's not really necessarily an obvious main idea here, right? They talk about adding NaOH until the, these things are, are basically basified, right? Uh, and then it talks about having a lot of starting material present. Uh, but there's sort of one phrase that I would definitely point out as being a pretty good main idea, and that comes to us maybe halfway through the paragraph, right? They talk about uh, they were then extracted and purified. Uh, and so, so even though they're not calling this basification using the NaOH uh, as sort of some sort of purification, uh, I would definitely consider that kind of lumped in with this purification method here. Uh, and so I would just highlight for paragraph five as our main idea, extracted and purified. All right, cool. Great, so we've gone through our paragraph and we've highlighted every, our passage and we've highlighted everything that we should be highlighting. Uh, and what's our other tool that we have available to us uh, when we're talking about passages? Yeah, so scratch paper. Scratch paper is the other key thing that we have available. Uh, and that we should be making the most out of, right? So our next heading here will be scratch paper. All right, and so there's a specific approach that we should be having for our scratch paper. Uh, and so in particular, we're going to want to first list the passage number with the question mark. Right, so if we have an example of one, um, let's say that we just have passage one, and that's what we're working on. So let's say that's questions one through five. All right. The next thing that we should be listing down is a, uh, giving our, pa our passage uh, with identifying title. What do I mean by that? So, so I mean that uh, basically we want to find a descriptive, uh, concise way to identify our passage um, in our own work. Right, so for this particular passage, if I needed a phrase that would have identified this more so than any other passage, uh, I could definitely use ester hydrolysis as a good example. All right, so far so good. Uh, and then the very last thing that we should be including in our scratch paper at all times is having our question numbers 
uh, and basically including all of our work next to it. Right. Uh, so basically, as you go through the questions, what uh, what work are you putting into it? Um, and sort of your calculations, or not calculations, but sort of your logic behind some of these statements, right? Uh, and in addition, and we'll see examples of this as well as we go through passages, uh, so there's less ambiguity there. Um, but the other thing that's important here, too, is that not only are you including work, but if there's important conclusions that you're sort of drawing as you go through questions, this is the place to include them as well. All right, so, so between highlighting and, and scratch paper, these are both very useful tools, uh, sort of inherently, right? By themselves, they're great. By themselves, they're great. Um, so you could sort of use this for basically any kind of reading that you would have to do, right? But, but why do they make them particularly useful for the MCAT? Uh, and the reason for that is because we should be taking this highlighting uh, and scratch paper, and we will be taking this highlighting and scratch paper, uh, and trying to combine them into sort of one general concept. Uh, and that's called the passage map. This should be here. Sorry about that. Right, so the idea of the passage map is that we're taking the information that we have from our highlighting, which is on that side of the board, and taking the information from the, the scratch paper that we have here as well, uh, and basically making ourselves a small, um, basically a concept map of what the passage is actually having. Right, uh, and so, so let's take a look at an example of this, right? So we've already mentioned the two things that we should be including in our, our scratch paper as being the passage number with the question numbers. Right, we also talked about including a pretty descriptive title, and so let's do ester hydrolysis. But then right underneath, underneath these two things, as part of our passage map, we want to take each paragraph and just point out an important point uh, or a general sort of main idea in our own words. Uh, and so let's do that for this particular uh, passage. So I'm going to go ahead and write map, underline, paragraph one. All right, so paragraph one, uh, even though it sort of gives us this information about natural facts and like all this other kind of stuff, um, to me, this is much more of an introduction. And so I'm just going to write intro. Right, it doesn't necessarily provide us with any key information that we're going to need to come back to. Paragraph two, on the other hand, talks about experiment one, so I'd first like to denote this by exp1. And we also know that in experiment one we have hydrolysis, but the, the problem is sort of thinking ahead. In the other experiment we also did hydrolysis too, right? Uh, and so the only other way that these differ uh, is whether a base or acid is used, right? And so for this one, let's go ahead and write base mediated or base med hydrolysis. Okay? And then for the exact same uh, reason, we're going to denote past paragraph 3, which has experiment 2, EXP2, as being acid catalyzed. Okay, so far so good. Uh, and then if we take a look at our very last paragraph, uh, which is paragraph four, we're just going to go ahead and highlight these, uh, or sort of write these down, excuse me, uh, as purification from our experiment. So purification would be a totally fine word to use. Okay, uh, so now that we have a good idea of how to basically highlight and how to form our scratch paper, uh, and also how to make our passage map to make uh, our path to the answer much more efficient uh, and much easier to get through, uh, let's start taking a look at figure-heavy passages.